Yeah, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for no. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> I pulled up the wrong. <laughs> I had the right one up just a second ago. Oh, there it is. I hit the wrong button. Regular scheduled council meeting. Yeah. Are you talking about something? Yeah, it says April first. It says April first. I think that's an April Fool's joke. Yeah, yeah. Where does it say April first? Uh, yeah, the that? file says the fourth, but the page says the first. Who got? Who does these packages? That'd be me. Was that a late night one? No, I I got them together Friday, which is probably April Fool's. They <laughs> auto populates, and I forgot to change it. To the April fourth meeting, two thousand twenty-two, at six thirty p.m. Uh, Ms. Burr, if you'd call roll, please. Sure, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Councilman Roglob. Here. Seven members present. Here. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trust. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. And we thank you, Lord, for this council and for our citizens. We pray that you would guide us in your way. Protect our first responders, our military, and their families at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, we'll need to do um, action on the special meeting minutes for February. So moved. 14, 2020. Second. Motion by Mr. Hold on. <laughs> hmm? What? What did I do? It's only March 21st is the meeting minutes that I submitted. Is what? I think the special meeting minutes. In the yeah, 321. We've already done that one. We've already done these? Yeah. Okay. So it should be March sure? 21st. But yeah, last week we... No, no, you did some other ones. I thought that you sent me with the ones that were about to catch up. 214, 228, March 7th. These are minutes. Okay. So just so the 21st? deleted off of there. So just the 21st? It's just the 21st, yeah. Okay, so the minutes were <coughs> March 21st, 2022. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second. Second by Mr. Bond. That was, that was a, okay. that was a month ago. <laughs> okay. Motion First by Mr. Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Bond. Okay. Any discussion on those minutes? Okay. All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Bond? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7 0. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on to communications. No, I got you. I just read you. <laughs> Did you have anything, Mr. Bridge? Huh? Did you have anything under communications? Do I have anything? Yeah, we have the public hearing. You guys have the public hearing tonight? Right, right. I know I'm saying. I didn't know if you had anything to add. Oh, no. no, no okay. No. So, council, so what we need to do is decide on uh, this, you know, what council wants to do as far as what we discussed at the last meeting. I'm going to call it more or less of a, as an advanced fee before. I mean, it's not going to be a new fee. It's just basically they're asking for it early. So, um, council has any thoughts on it? We've had a little time to think about it. Sure. Uh, my only question was my question to um, waste management was what they could do to bring more value to that right. for us. And just if anyone had any ideas as to what we need to ask them for, as far as bringing, they said they would be willing to work on different things. But I just didn't know if anybody else had any ideas as far as what would be helpful. I think July 4th get together was a thought but, um, to provide the trash or recycling for that. But right. Yeah, and they would probably, I mean, I can't speak for them. You well, I mean, they, they technically already do because um, we use the uh, baseball park dumpster, which they already donate as part of the city contract. Um, so they kind of already do for the holidays. Uh, my biggest thing would be I, I think we need to somehow reevaluate bulk recycle pickup, you know, and take it off of the pools site and, and, and do something there because with the amount of home deliveries everyone gets nowadays, um, you know, you order the smallest thing from Amazon and comes in the biggest box possible. And, 
you, know, you can't break that down and put it in that recycle bin. If you do, you know, two weeks later, you're sitting on a ton of recycles. Yeah. Um, so I would love for, you know, and I know Mr. Bridge had said that they were coming up with some ideas about where to put the new recycles bin instead of getting it out of the pool. You guys haven't gotten well with that part yet, have you? No, I know the pool manager and how we should be working on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's the pool manager again? Uh, I think she's sitting out here in the audience somewhere. In the blue shirt, maybe. Um, she might have I mean, look at that. Councilman Rowe, did I hear you say suggesting maybe oh, every every week recycling pickup? I'm just making notes. So I, I, I mean, yeah. it, it, it would it would help. It definitely would. Um, especially, I mean, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. My, I mean, the amount of Amazon boxes I get on my front door. You're buying too much. Oh, I don't buy anything. Uh, you need to cancel them cards. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to my wife and my children about that one. Um, I think a weekly recycle for the entire city would be would be much better. I think that would help with the uh, the recycle at the pool, um, and then somehow maybe doing some sort of call to the center if we have bulk pickup for recycle large boxes or something, um, where you can actually put it into the recycle center or recycle bin. They took it up now. People just got to cut the box down. Yeah. So it's an extra step that citizens have yeah. to do. Um, okay. So this is not effective for June one. So we could take a list of things back to her and email her tomorrow, and then see what she has to say to that, and then come back to council. What is um, what is I mean, depending on what like you've suggested, does anybody have any feel of of the increase? I mean, are they for it? I mean. The increase will come no matter what, but just going to come either when we okay it or it's going to come next year. I mean, it's coming in December. I it'll come in December. I mean, it, it's a six months advance, advance, and it's 93 cents a month. So it equates it to less than six bucks. Six bucks. It equates to two cups of coffee at, it, at your local. Right. But and, and then uh, if, if we do it early now, no. it won't do it again in December. No. no. So, no. no. Um, you know, so. do we look at it as they've been pretty good to us with the dumpsters and, and the ballpark and the festival and all the other special events that, that they work with us on? I mean, do we? I'm um, fine with, with go ahead and uh, I mean, yeah. it now and, and then going back and at least having some ideas when we start negotiating the new contract or some, mm -hmm. some things that we, we would like to see change. Negotiate, yes. I'm curious to see what that increase would be like on every other week, you know, if it's if the 93s, if this don't cover it, how much extra would it be? But I think next at the next contract cycle, anyway, is something we're going to recommend the council put in, as mm -hmm. opposed to every two weeks, every week recycling, just for the fact of how things are mailed. To well, us. And, and the fact, I mean, that, you know, I mean, and, and again, I speak for myself and, and my neighbors. I mean, I have neighbors who they forget. So now they're going a month with, with not being able to recycle. Because mm -hmm. um, they forget, oh, it's this side of the lake this week and that side of the lake. Right. And that. I mean, it's just, I mean, yes, you can get on their website and it shows you the calendar, but let's face it, a lot well, of people aren't. They also uh, send you an email every every time if it's the recycle week. They send you an email the week before, like on Thursday or Friday. Or at least I get them. And they're kind of annoying to me, but I just look to see if there's any <laughs> recycle <laughs> things out there. <laughs> you know, the trash goes out once a month because I have a little bag once a month. You know. It's, I really have too big of a container for yeah. myself now. Mm -hmm. The the uh, one thing we I know it's only six bucks a month. Not six bucks a whole year. No. I mean six month a dollar a month. So I meant to say six six dollars for the rest of the year on the bill, which is going to come anyways in January or uh, in December. The uh, so how much hassle do you think we'll get from? And any, this is to anybody, how much house do you think we'll get from citizens by raising their trash bill by, it comes out, what, every quarter, so $3 a, a quarter uh, for three months? You think they'll they'll notice it, or you think our phones will be blown up over $3? I mean, I, I, I can see some citizens that are on fixed limited incomes, and it's mostly senior citizens that, that maybe well, but that I don't hurt, but it's yeah. going to it's going to come regardless. Right. If we wait till December, it's coming. If we, but it would be if we're it, gracious it, enough now to give it to them now, then you know it, it's still going to come. And, and again, it's only six bucks. It wouldn't be ninety three cents for most of those citizens who are on fixed income have the lower 
Not all of them. Not all of them. They, they have the option, but not all of them. I I'm have a number. Fixed income. I still got the big thing because it's usually full every two weeks. Because <laughs> of recycle stuff, you know. I recycle almost everything. Would council like to know the number count of customers on each level? Okay, that if you have written, that, yeah. I have it written down. Of course, I won't be able to find it easy. I just, here we go. Okay, so. We have a total of 1,819 users, which is low, <coughs> which had around 2,000. That's a different story. 1,439 have the standard service. 196 are signed up for the low volume. And 184 are signed up for senior. So the vast majority of your users are the standard service. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and the senior and the low volume will be even a cheaper rate than the dollar a, a month. It's I forget, at 73 cents, I think they say. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I don't have a problem with letting them have the 5% increase now mm -hmm. versus uh, December. The, uh, they do a lot of extra things for us. At least we say they do extra things, but we're actually paying it for it in our city contract. Well, yeah, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would agree with you. It's, uh, you know, they've been good to us as far as helping out with those services, and it's going to come anyway. Uh, I don't see an issue with it. It's not a, and again, it's not a massive jump. Uh, you know, and then actually, I mean, if, if that if that if that amount of money is hard for someone to adjust for, they it's probably better to do it now and get used to it and, and be able to budget for it before the holiday season. See, one, one other thing I'd like to, to throw out there: the uh, I know there's a lot of people, and most people a lot younger than I am, shops online, they have a lot of things coming from Amazon and who knows where. Uh, so they do have a lot of boxes. I know I buy dog food, and they, they give me a box I could pack up my whole house just about in for a bag of dog food, and I'm going, why? And then they got stuff full of paper, so the, the bag don't move around. Uh, two is good for that. Mm -hmm. Just throw that out there. Uh, one thing I'd like to see, uh, I don't know if it can happen now or maybe in the next contract, but something if the manager and council agrees to, uh, to talk to them about, if we can find some place to put a second container for cardboard, I think that would alleviate some of the problem also. I like the one at the pool. I think the pool uses it during the pool season. I know I use it probably about four times a year to I just save my boxes up. I get a car load and I take them out. Mm -hmm. You know, I break them down and whatnot. Sure. Uh, so if we could get a second dumpster someplace, I don't know what council thinks about that. Uh, I don't know where it would be. Maybe at the city building, you know, right, right behind the building someplace. Uh, with that little ground car, that little gray car park would be probably a good spot. Definitely not where the cruisers are, because those are new. I mean, does anybody have any thoughts on a second dumpster someplace, or, or is that out of the question? Or what? I think we would. I think it'd be best to make sure we get a handle on the first one and make sure we have it all squared away as far as as far as uh, legal dumping and, and things being put in that shouldn't be before we move to a second one. If that was locked, and at one time I thought it was locked, and I, I thought, it pardon me, locked. it is locked. They just leave it beside it. Who cuts? It? Oh, the people do. Uh, Cut the lock off to put stuff in it. Yeah, well, I know the last time I was up there, there was a bunch of boxes and stuff outside. They're just laying there. So I threw all the boxes in. I broke a couple of them down. And somebody had put an uh, electric cord in there from a stove or a dryer. And I took it home to it in my recycle bin at home. Because I wanted to throw it in the cardboard bin there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I picked up a little bit, but I wouldn't clean up the whole yard. I'd still be there doing it. So. Mm -hmm. And the woods, a little bit of woods there, it's full of trash. I don't know whose property that is. Yeah. Um, maybe long term, we need to figure out an actual location that could just be during business hours, maybe get the locked gate on it outside of business hours or something. Yeah. Um, maybe a good idea. And, you know, if you need to bring stuff, bring it during 8 to 5 or whatever it is yeah. and have it, you know. 
doesn't necessarily have to be open on the weekend, but um, maybe that's kind of a long-term goal where we're looking for a place in the city that we can do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so now is the time if, if council wants to do any amendments to the to the contract. So let's say you guys approve the rate increase, we're going to have to open up that contract and amend it anyway. So now is the time to add these little things into it. Oh, absolutely. Um, so based off hearing what everyone says is maybe we go in, we say, you know, hey, council has agreed to the uh, terms of the increase. We want you to look at how much that would be or not be with an increase with every Greek recycling starting now, starting in June 1. And then we'll also write into that, you know, once we find a location, if we do for a second dumpster for recycling, you'll go ahead and take care of that as well. We'll just put language in our say when we find it. It may not happen, it may not. I would like to see how much every re recycling re relieves the dumping in the city before we make drastic changes. You know, and if that doesn't work, and it, it, then we can isolate it. Because I think it's a lot of people from outside our city dumping into this stuff. Oh. I'm not saying that we don't have our own people doing it, but we can sit there and argue too, just based off what has been found there. We had a, that we is, had a plumbing company, a plumbing, from, company, out a plumbing of company from Springfield coming here yeah. and dumping stuff. You know, so instead of taking it out of our residence, let's just say, how much, it, how much would it extra be if we did every brief recycling? It may not be that much of an increase, but now's the time to go in and look at all that since we're going to be opening a contract yeah. anyway. The only other thing I'd throw out there, I don't know if there's a need for this or not, is um, I, I don't know if we've ever done it in New Carlisle, but I think when, when we lived in Springfield, they did it where there was a certain day and the local trash, whoever they were using at the time, brought in big dumpsters for big cleanup. Mm -hmm items for people in the community to bring tires and all kinds of different stuff that doesn't normally fit but it was a one one time and it just helped kind of clean the community up yeah, so i don't know if do that, that would be something we do that for you. okay and they facilitate that for us we we man it but they bring the containers and yeah, yeah, take care of that yeah, yeah. Our i think it's usually in, in june june i think Spring cleanup yeah. usually, yeah. yeah. And what's kind of cool about our contract is when we negotiated that, um, I think it's two cycles ago, we had put in um, bulk recycling. All you need to do is call in advance, 48 hours in advance, and wrap it if it needs to be wrapped, and they'll come get that for you on demand. Um, but they won't take tires and stuff like that. But we usually have a good turnout for the spring cleanup every year, yeah. and it does it does wonders. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to comment on the, I think only two, two or three of us comment on the agreeing or disagreeing in the advance on the pay or before we move forward? Or? I'm not a big fan of dictating to people who they have to do business with. I've not voted for any of these contracts. Um, they set the rate. She came in and she said, well, everything, all our, price, our expenses are going up. Well, so that, that, that's happening to everybody in town. Everybody's paying higher gas bills, higher electric bills, four dollar a gallon gasoline. Um, if we can put up with it, I'm sure we can. Well, um, either way, I guess we need a motion. Either way, a motion to uh, let the contract stay as it is and let them uh, get their increase in December how it is currently or a motion to accept with uh, no real changes. Can I ask one question real quick? Push, yeah. Please. What's the history on the city having one trash provider? No, I don't think we ever have, which is not common. Well, I mean, other than right now. We've right. always, it's always been one provider. Yeah. Okay. Well, I took it, that's, uh, when you say that, you, you, when you say one provider, that's, that's a single hauler contract. Right. Like Fairborn, they have a contract with, well, both with weight management, one for residential, one for commercial. So you only have one hauler coming into your city. We don't have that here. We have a single hauler for a residential, but our residential is only one and two families. So if you're anything with like a three or four quad apartment complex or a business, you can choose who you want. Now, Mr. Grimm's point is, yeah, it's the government controls that by we put contracts in place, but there's a reason why. And that is wear and tear on your roads. More importantly is we're a city, 
so you should force people to have the trash contract. If not, they're not going to get rid of the trash. So that's why. But when you say single hauler, it can be, mean multiple things. That's when it goes. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, my only thought, I, I, I agree with Dale in that you know, everybody's having to make adjustments. They're a big company that they need to foresee this stuff and manage their business. But I also get, uh, you know, I think long term, I think this puts us in a better position as we negotiate another contract down the road. And it's kind of an olive branch kind of type of thing. So, um, and it's going to happen anyway. It's right. going to happen in December, yeah. regardless of what we do. In the past if, two bid cycles, we we've that. only had Rumpke and Waste Management respond. Yeah. So they'll, Rumpke will be their competition. Do you have anything? No, I agree with what Ben said and what Mr. Lindsay said. I, prices are going up for everybody, but if you go to a mm -hmm. store and buy anything, or you go to a restaurant, and their prices went up too. So everybody's trying to deal with the increase in the inflation. Mm -hmm. Decision. Mm -hmm. Look to council. Whatever you guys want to do. I move we leave it as is. Second. So motion by Mr. Vice Mayor to leave the contract as is. And a second by Mr. Cook. No. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? No. Councilman Cook? No. So, so now we would need a motion. Grim Cook Bond said no. Oh, he said no. Yes. No, you're right. Yeah. No. I want to make sure I have, I have a question for the city manager. Just a second. You good, Ms. Murder? Yeah. 5 2, right? Yeah, 5 2. No. 5 1. Six, 1. Six, 6 to 1. 6 1. They'll vote it now. They'll vote it. I thought Cook and Grim said no. <laughs> they they yes. said no. Grim said yes. Cook said no. Crack milk? No. You said no. You said no. no. You said no. You said no. You said no. Oh, wait, wait a minute, I you seconded it. No, he made the he made the second. second. To, oh, but you end up saying no. Just because you second it, don't you have to vote for it? Yeah. <laughs> you can make the motion and vote again. So it's actually one six. I've done that. Correct. Yes. Yes. I swear I heard. Okay. That's all right. My say. apologies. Okay. okay. Okay, Mr. Lindsay has a question. Mr. Bridge, uh -huh. when you go and talk to them, are all these things going to be discussed in the since we're opening up the contract, or they're opening up the contract? Uh, how I'm going to do this is at the next meeting, you guys will have a and don't quote me on this. A resolution? No, it'll be an ordinance because you have to open the or amend the ordinance mm -hmm. that approved this contract. So, do you want me to go in there and just do the 93 cents? Do you want me to go in there and price the recycling, every seek recycling? I, my, myself, I would like to, to see maybe what they come up with before we sign off on it. Okay. I'd like to see how much more it's going to cost the citizens to have weekly recycling. Uh, I'm sure we, we have. We still have a little bit of time before we really have to make a decision on that. So I'd like to have something, if we could, if council agrees, maybe on the water bill, informing the residents that this is possibly going up and get their input on it. We're not going to have time for that. Because if this, 
June 1. You're going to have to have everything back to you guys. No later than the first meeting in May, quite possibly the meeting in eight, last week in April, just due to effective time period. Mr. Lindsay, would you want a price on the... Um, no, I'm talking about like getting... I mean, I'm trying to like take the citizens out of it. I'm sorry, we get it out because we already done the water bills. So I got to figure out when the next round of water bills come in to even get it on and see if that time comes in. Mm -hmm. We can always put it on oh, Facebook and stuff out. like that. It'd be the end of next month. Yeah. yeah but was you wanting the price on full-time recycling for starting this year or at the... Starting... Well, if we have to open up the contract, then find out what it's going to cost to do that starting in June. Okay. And here's my logic how I'm going to handle this. I'll Pardon call me? her tomorrow and be like, hey, can you start getting me a price for every week recycling with the 5% with the five increase that we're going to agree to? Um, and then basically I'll have see how much, you how much it is. Then. And then for the sake of time, I might just bring two legislation pieces to you guys, one amending the contract with only the rate increase, one amending mm -hmm. the contract with the rate increase and every week recycling. That way one can just die for lack of motion. We can move forward. Kind of like how we do yeah. when we do the original. We have usually have about three or four ordinances for that one waste contract. You guys pick one and go with it. Okay. You know. So, um, but I just want to make sure I have council's re desires, and then that's every week recycling. <laughs> and then is that the only thing we wanted to look at? Well, the time. possibility and an extra with the at second some dumpster, point, yeah, a second sure. dumpster at some if, point, if the maybe. Yeah, you know, I mean, if if we can find some place to put one. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, other than that, I think they. They do a yeah, I think they do great. So. They do, and I'll be honest with you, it's they're so easy to work with. I mean, they've got us out of the bind a couple times. Oh yeah, yeah. they have. I mean, so, if, if we can get pricing on them two items, then okay. I, I, I would say go. <coughs> I would ask for them to throw in the extra recycling. I would start off there. For for the rest of this contract. If we okay the increase. I would just ask to go to every week or something. Oh, they, they very well could, but they're probably going to come back and say it's going to be an additional this, too. They might, and, but they, but may they not. could say not. But I would start there sure. if it was me. So they're doing Good half stream. the city every other week now. Let them get it off. So they're really only adding like one manpower. They do it every week. So, yeah, they'll have to crunch their numbers on there, and I don't know what they'll come back at. They may be Never hurts to ask. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start clears. Cool. I think that sounds council okay with that. There you go. All right. Anything else you need for that, Mr. Bridge? I think I'm good. Alrighty. And I believe, you know. Oh, my turn. Yeah, I say I believe it's back to you. I just had my right. screen. So it's kind of a short one, just for the sake of the first meeting of the month. But we have an objection to a liquor, a liquor permit. So we get these um, quite frequently. Uh, it's considered a housekeeping. <laughs> But basically, uh, motion needed for no objection. So if council doesn't have any objections to any of these liquor permits renewal, we'll just move <coughs> on. We don't have to do anything at that point in time when I'm to send a notification in or not. So I will give council a second to determine if they want to object to this or not. I have no objection. No objection. No objection. No. Nope. All right. So we'll move on. We and need a motion or something for that? Or just um, show of hands or something? Yeah, you guys do a motion. So moved. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Rodo. Mayor Lowry? Um, yes, I have no objection. If I'm saying that right. <laughs> you said yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. And Councilman Roblox. Yes. Set to 7 Thank you. And moving on here, Jason McPhee has resigned from the Charter Review Commission. So we need a motion to accept that. So moved. Second. You move. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good job. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Okay. Any discussion, Council? Are we ready? Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. Thank you. And moving on to team manager report. New water procedures. We are very excited. Um, at the next meeting, you guys are going to have some great legislation in front of you. Um, our utility department did a fantastic job at going through our codes 
and making some suggested changes. I'm reviewing all that right now. We're going to get something formal to you guys, but I think it's going to be a great impact on our citizens. I think you guys are going to like it. And it's just really new and improved water procedures. So um, we'll have some information on that. And again, it's just an intro, so you guys will have two weeks to actually read everything before you vote on it. Uh, but we're excited to give those new procedures to you. Our new Kyle Health stats, they are stat attached. Any questions on those, just shoot me an email. Um, uh, Derek will be working on an economic development web page. I do believe Councilman Grimm had brought this up uh, a month or two ago. Um, so we're going to be focused on having a dedicated web page with all our land available, all the businesses, uh, buildings that are available for sale. Uh, we'll manage that in-house. We are excited about that. Uh, Derek will bring a little bit more information about that at the next meeting. So will that be a whole new page or will it just be a new tab on our current website? It'll be a link to a whole new page. Really? Yeah, it'll be, so it'll be on, the main link will be on our web page for economic development. Click that. It's going to take you to the site that we operate here. Just because it's going to be a lot of Scott to change that stuff. It's going to change. It's going to change a lot of information a lot. So we want to be able to control that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Sure. Uh, boards and Commission Handbook, I'm just going to politely uh, request that we kind of look at that next meeting. Um, there's still quite a bit I need to go through to make any kind of recommendation to council. It is a rather large document. Um, but I didn't have really much time to uh, focus on it like I wanted to. Um, so we'll tuckle, tuckle back, ta tackle that at the next meeting. Just in the meantime, again, just start reviewing that. I am going to seek guidance from you guys about how, how, what you want in it, what you don't want in it, because it's, it's, a, it's a very inclusive document. Um, upcoming legislation is the code, up, code generally, employees generally code section update, still working on that. Going to look at our indigent burial policy. Um, we've been getting a lot of those lately. I just want to make sure that we are current current state code, uh, that we are doing everything we're supposed to be doing with that. So that's a work in progress too. And again, the water code, water code section updates will be intro to you guys at the next meeting. And that's all I have for the seed management report. Be happy to entertain any questions. Okay, any questions for Mr. Ridge? Mm -hmm. Sir. Do we have a... Uh a city map on how we want the city to grow and what we want things, you know, as far as zoning and stuff goes in the city, as far as like restaurants or a bar or something like that. We have a, we have, we a, have that an overall map that's like up to date. Yeah, we have a zoning map. Yeah, that's always up to date. And basically it's done by your areas, like your central business, your general business. And each one of those zones dictate what type of business can go in those zones. When was the last time it was updated? Oh, is it daily? I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't change very often. Okay. Yeah. Right. Once it, once the zone set, like where you're at R5, it's not going to change for a very very long time. And your residential areas don't change. It's usually your outskirts. I want that to be zoned uh, business. So I can put a manufacturing plant in my house. Okay. Well, that needs to go through your planning board. We just take care of it. <laughs> I don't think that they're going to approve that in the middle residential area, but you can try. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Mr. Mr. Bond. Mr. Bridge. So you said that I had to go through your planning board. Who is the planning? Uh, planning board is Mr. Fields, Mrs. Fields, um, Alvin Putterball. Um, you, you're, you, you're on planning board? So you're on okay. Um, yeah. So there. Okay. Okay. What board is this? Five local uh, citizens. I thought you switched over. What's that? You're at the Five local board. citizens. At what board is it that has no people on it? BDA. Oh, yeah. no, that's us. Okay. Yeah, we're the zoning board. Yeah, we're the zoning board. Who's your fifth? Oh, yeah. Mrs. No, um, Mrs. McFarland. <laughs> this is McFarland's the fifth. So Mrs. Hoffman and Mrs. Mrs. McFarland's the fifth. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Bond? All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Yeah. We appreciate it as always, sir. All right. Moving on. Let's see here. Comments from members of the public. If anyone has any questions, comments, uh, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and keep your comments to five minutes, please. Keeping your time over. Hello. I'm Julie Reese, 6184 Dayton Brant Road, live in Bethel Township. Uh, in full disclosure, I'm a Bethel Township trustee. The only thing I will say as a township trustee on their behalf is we are strongly against annexation. The rest of this I'm going to speak as an individual, as a resident of that township. So I am also against annexation and I have um, a few reasons I'd just like to convey to you. Uh, one is that Bethel School is a pretty small school even today 
and we cannot keep pace with the new students that are coming our way. I'm sure you already know that Huber Heights has annexed uh, 630 some acres and that's due to be completed at the end of or sometime next year um, as far as I know and now they're going to annex another 260 acres which they think will produce 800 to 900 homes so we're getting students at 130 a year new students this is five to six classrooms worth of kids so you can imagine the challenge of trying to keep up with having even just having space for them, let alone everything else. Um, so the other thing is our traffic and roads are not designed to handle the high density development that has been coming our way with annexation. We have country roads and we have a limited number of roads. So it's not like you can go down a side street to avoid traffic. Um, the area that you guys are looking to annex on the corner of Scarf and New Carlisle Road, those are the two roads. You either go down Scarf or you go down New Carlisle Road. So uh, there's just there's just no other way. And even with the Huber Heights annexation, the road changes and the traffic changes don't keep up because they do studies, as you know, and it's usually based on some pattern or a number of deaths at an intersection. And also, we do not own most of the roads. We are basically State Route 201, State Route 202, State Route 571, and State Route 40. So most of those, most of the roads are not owned by us. Uh, another thing is the annexation is changing the culture of our community. So, you know, God love you guys, you live in the city, that's your preference. But people come to Bethel Township because we like to have a little more space, a little more land. Uh, maybe la raise our own livestock or, or grow some crops. So all of that is changing with this high density development. We're losing that land. We're losing the, the country feel. The small feel of the school is disappearing because, as I said, we're getting 130 students a year. So it's changing the culture of our township. So an additional issue with this particular annexation is the drainage and the Silver Lake ecosystem, which of course we're concerned about. Um, there's already a drainage issue where the water runs across the road and onto the people that live on the other side of New Carlisle Road on the south side. And then this could create some negative impact to Silver Lake as well. And the area that is proposed to not be built on, which is kind of the swamp area that goes down the hill to Silver Lake, um, they're not building on that because they're going to offer you, you know, a, a nice park area. It's because they can't build on it, right? There's just no way. So um, it's just something to, to consider that uh, Silver Lake is one of the few natural uh, lakes created the way that it was in our state. So one last thing, there was one lady in our community who likened annexation to Russia invading the Ukraine. So <clears throat> annexation, with annexation, the land gets taken from us. We don't want it. We don't want this to happen, but we can't stop it because of the laws. As you know, any municipality that touches our township, and there's four of them, so New Carlisle, Tip City, Vandalia, and Huber Heights, can come and just take our land. So, um, you know, just to say, lastly, we are your neighbors. We shop here, we eat here. And we, we want you guys to be a good neighbor and not come and take our land and let us live the way that we like to with our culture and our open spaces. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, go ahead. Ma'am, what was your name again? Julie Reese. Julie Reese. Uh, has the developer contacted the township about trying to annex uh, because my understanding is the township trustees has to buy off on the annexation, mm -hmm. the school has to buy off on it, and then the county commissioners has to buy off on it. Is that not true? No. So the township has zero say in this. The, the trustees do not get the vote. The residents don't get the vote. The school has no say. So, and rarely do school lines get redrawn. Mm -hmm. So wherever the school line is today is likely where it would mm -hmm. stay unless Tecumseh wanted the kids so badly that they would come and say, yes, we want them. 
So we get no vote in it. The, the trustees have no say. The residents have no say. The commissioners do vote, but they only vote on the petition. And there's criteria. I believe there's seven items. And if the petition meets those seven items, and it's things like uh, you have to have 5% contiguous touch. So 5% is not very much. Uh, it can't be more than 500 acres. You have to draw the map, you know, legal, a legal perspective. You know, it's things like that. Okay. So basically, if the developer does the petition correctly, the commissioners also have no say. So, so Actually, the, the township true. understands. Yeah, it is true. No, if they, it depends on what type they, sorry to interrupt you, but I got to clear this air here. The town, your mine and county commissioners can't actually deny this per, per, it goes back to the review cycle, but they actually do have a say. Not, you also have to, it's like if we do a type two, my, my question, I'm, I'm sorry to stole it from you, I truly am, but I just gotta get, gotta get this. You stated that you're on behalf of the Bethel Township trustees, you're saying that you're against annexation. Yes. So you guys met in open meeting and discussed that? Yes. So you, when you say that you're against the annexation, you're against all annexation, are you for this particular new Carlisle annexation? We are not for any annexation. Okay. So there's two types of annexation you can do. Annexation law in the state of Ohio is written in favor of annexation. If both municipalities or both the township and the city would agree to it, that is a, either type one or type two. That's an annexation agreement. So therefore, if that would be an agreement coming to you guys, you guys vote on it, they would vote on that agreement too. So they would have a vote on that. If that both things pass that, that goes to the county, the Miami County administrators take that information and they vote on it. If by chance one entity objects, and it sounds like that's why I want to ask you that question because it's going to align us how I'm going to talk to Jake before Thursday. Um, if one entity says no, then we only have to do is pass a statement of services. It's very much similar to an annexation agreement, but it's just titled differently. So if they do a statement of services, then it goes back to the county. The county, their county, can deny that, but then it goes back into a review period. So. If they don't agree to it, it's just statement of services. It delays a little bit more. Miami County commissioners can either approve it or deny it. If they deny it, it's like a 60 day waiting period and it goes back through the process again. Ultimately, you are correct. Annexation law favors annexation. If it goes back to that review period and everything's there, your county commissioners will have to approve that because it is annexation law is favored in the state of Ohio. Correct. It can be stopped like if our citizens referend the rezoning of that, that we could stop here, our citizens could, but. You know, just wanted to make sure that, you know. Well, the, so just uh, one thing is the trustees do not really have any say because, yes, we could enter into an agreement, but, but if we don't, if we, you know, whether we say yes or no, you still, you still can come and do it without our blessing. So we don't really have a say, the trustees or the voters. No, but you would think that, you know, given, I would, I would encourage the Bethel Township trustees to actually get on board with it because, that's step one. The other step is it goes to our planning board, and our planning board is going to sit there and say, yeah, it's too dense, or yeah, it's not, or yeah, we're okay with it. You know, so it, it, it would, I would like to see both entities work together. And then you know, I would, my advice to you is look at the annexation agreement because ultimately it's going to go to our planning board. And it would be probably a better approach with our planning board with, you know, being good neighbors and working things out, you know. Um, so when you say working things out though, so let me tell you what it is from a township perspective. We get all the headaches. We get the extra students, the traffic, the road issues, the Silver Lake issue. We get everything. And you guys get some tax income. So do your school, we, you get 0.75% income tax on every one of those houses being built. But, but it, we also get the students that go with that. But and you as you know that. that taxes do not cover the cost of putting a, a student to school. And we have no buildings. We have no classrooms. So we're already behind the eight ball as far as mm -hmm. funding. How do you fund six classrooms a year? Six classrooms a year. That's a lot. So I don't know. I, I'm, it, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a good deal for us. <laughs> it's a better deal for you guys. But we're hoping that you decide that you don't need that land. You've got some other land. Develop that. I have, I have one more question for you, ma'am. Does the township and the trustees understand we are not going after this land that the, con or the developer is coming to us? Does, does, does your whole township understand that? Yes, we understand that, but you are the only ones that can say no. 
So the developer does it because it's the same for him, right? He's going to make a truckload of money, but it's going to be because you guys annex it. If you don't, then he can't do the same thing. But, but my, my understanding from the code on annexation, if he petitions us, and I was also under the under, uh, uh, apparently misconception that the township, the schools, and the county over there had to buy off on it, and then it would come to, to our county commissioners and then back to us. Uh, apparently, I was misinformed. Uh, the, but it, under the code, if, if he comes to us with the petition and we turn him down, again, under my understanding, we can be sued. And he can sue the city for turning that down. Well, he doesn't come, he comes to you with a request to provide the services. And you can say no to that because you don't have the capacity or you don't want to. Or you can just say, I'm, we're going to be a good neighbor and we're not going to do this. But we're also missing a great opportunity to expand the city's income tax base and grow our city to make sure the city has a financial health well-being for years to come, which is our responsibility and every person in this room. Agreed, but it's at the point. expense of your neighbors is all I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying that's not true because it's free money for you guys, but... Oh, it ain't free money. It ain't free. <laughs> oh, it free. is. It is in the sense that you don't get the traffic problems, you don't get the school problems. What do you problems. mean we're not going to get the traffic problems? I'm sorry? How do you, how do you, what do you mean we're not going to get traffic? My biggest concern is what traffic is going to happen on 235 between Main Street and 571. We're going to get the vast majority of the traffic and, problems. And, those late and then we have to pay to get that wear and tear on the road done. So yeah, I mean, there, there, there's, I understand your concern, believe me. My dad lives out in the township. He would be mortified if his son's coming to town. I, I get it. I feel your, I feel, I understand every one of your concerns. Yeah. But you got to understand our concerns too. You know. Okay. All right. Should we counsel anything else? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Natalie Donahue, 7835 Agon Broad Road, New Carlisle, Ohio. Um, Full disclosure, I'm a school board member, and um, but I am here today as a private citizen of Bethel Township, and I won't repeat all the good points that Julie made. Um, I'll just try to add to them that, yes, um, one of my notes tonight was, yes, we understand this is a type two annexation, and uh, oh, we've dealt with them for a number of years. That's why I, I've been attending all of our trustee meetings for years. Um, tr tracking this and trying to be proactive and and um, that's why I'm here tonight and uh, I, I won't be able to be here next time though because I have my own meeting but um, it does have a little little recourse for the township um, again uh, the developer walks away the homeowner the property owner walks away with some money but um, and, and you might end up with some extra income here in town but everybody ends up with a lot of issues because of um, I, I know that you're looking for ways to make additional income for your city, but you're all bright people. Um, you're smart. That's why you were elected and, and why some were hired and promoted within the um, group here. But I think there's other ways to do that. Um, I would also like to say that this uh, management company, um, I, I read their mission statement, and it's a little bit appalling. I just want to read it to you real quick. This, they say our goal is to build our capital base to enable us to programmatically exploit the long-term attractiveness in the residential land development. Now, if you look up the word exploit, that's kind of a damaging word. I, I don't think it's a positive word. Um, it means to derive benefit from. And I think that when people go out and try to make benefit at the expense of everybody else, I don't really think that's a good option. So I noticed that also on their website, um, their cookie cutter mm -hmm. homes that they're mm -hmm. developing in Springfield, and they said they have a development in Huber Heights. I'm not sure where that is exactly, but um, because I haven't heard anybody talking about that one, but um, it, it doesn't look that exciting. The other thing, I know um, Dave Hoagland's not here tonight, but this um, one leg here, on the uh, southwest corner next to his home has 19 lots if you drive down that road and you sit outside 
and you think, how in the world could you put 19 homes on there? I can't even imagine four homes, let alone two homes. So think of the size of this. You guys have, your planning board has the opportunity. If we get stuck with this, they need to consider that because that's just ridiculous. And then as you drive off Lake, that first corner there before that gentleman's home, 27 homes. I, I can't even imagine what that would look like as you're entering that area. I don't think it's going to be pleasant. And then to add the 250 homes to the north, northern corner there, it's just, it just doesn't look right. Um, I was wondering if anybody had done a survey on this with your residents. Is this something that um, I know ultimately you'll make um, the vote to reject or um, accept the proposal by the developer? But I just wondered, have you looked into that? And also, have you looked at them to see what other kinds of income opportunities they'd like to see you um, take? Maybe, maybe they have some good ideas. And then um, lastly, I want to say, um, as parents, right, we would never teach our children to take something out of somebody else's hands. You know, we avoid that at all costs. It, it's, it's a matter of ethics, right, and morality and integrity, doing the right thing when nobody's looking. We would also not go into our neighbor's yard and take their grill or their lawn equipment or their patio furniture and sell it just so we could have the money and we could use that money for our own resources. So again, I know you guys are bright, you're smart people. Please consider this and be brave and stand up and say no. Just because people threaten litigation doesn't mean they're gonna do it. So please be brave and reject the proposal for annexation. We're, we're very much against it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Hi, um, my name is Tanya Wells. I live at 5330 Eastland Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio. I am a Bethel Township resident. I am 0.5 miles from this particular annexation. And, you know, since this has come to my attention at the beginning of February, I'll be honest with you, I didn't understand the annexation laws. My interpretation was exactly what some of you believe, that the township should be able to say no, and then the county should be able to say no. The answer to that is not that easy. And it's because I've been actually done some research. I've looked at the Ohio annexation laws, which were neat, that were done in 2001. And it was supposedly to make it better for the townships and the counties. It did the inverse. And I, I can, I'm actually shocked. I mean, I was frustrated for years with the township because I didn't understand. Because the response was generally, there's nothing we can do right to your house representatives. Well, there actually is something that can be done, but it depends on the municipality who's getting it. Now, I understand that it is something that you can benefit from. There's no question. But it's also something that, I mean, you do have to look at the long-term picture. And I said this at the planning meeting, that you want to look at a community that's going to thrive, a community that people are going to want to stay. So I would concentrate on what you do have on the 235, not tons and tons of houses on other areas and options that have been given to you instead of taking this. Now, if you choose to say the yes, and I would love to say, well, we should work together, but ultimately, even if we were to work together, you guys and your zoning board makes the ultimate, it'll be two acres, it'll be one acre, it'll be five houses on one acre. No matter what we say, the planning board has that. They're the ones who make the decision. And here's what's interesting. When I was at your planning board, one of your members actually said, do we have the option to change that once it's been presented from the developer? So who's running the show? Your developer did approach you after they approached the farmer. So the farmer didn't have a sign out that said this is for sale. This is the developer who came in. And by the way, I know a little bit about this developer. And I know people who know the developer, and I also know that from their standpoint, New Carlisle was very interested. So these are things that, as a public, we hear. And to just say, I, I, I urge you to, as a council member who are voting 
to understand this law and understand the ramifications of it. If it so happens that you do choose to do this, make it a development that is not 300 houses. That is not gonna overwhelm your city. Yes, we might be getting taxes, but guess not, not as much as you're gonna get. And not with all the headaches that we're gonna get. No amount of money is worth that. Because we can't even do what we're doing now. And what's also to say that those sitting on the board, are there some of you that are gonna to wanna to get into that development? I mean, I don't know. I, my thing is, is that if you're gonna do it, it's gonna happen if that is indeed because we have nothing to fight against it. Make it at least an area where people wanna stay. Give it a large household with a large house, expensive house, a couple of acres. I'll tell you what, they'll stick. Because people in carriage trails, which is the development that you're gonna kind of put in, they don't stay. They're constantly moving out. So again, please look at this and don't just think because Bethel Township said yes and county said yes, that means we're for it because we'd have no way to really say no. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else? Good evening, Jeff Morford. 4720 SCARP. Uh, just a couple things. Who would I contact at DDC Management in charge of this project? What was your question? I didn't understand you. People, DDC Management, who would be in charge? I mean, I've got a name of Oaks and Bills and Wilbur, but I don't want to waste their time. And if I just send it information or contact their office just as a general thing or do you have some kind of name that be more beneficial we've had no contact okay no. Yeah. Good council enough. has Good not enough. had any contact with anybody concerning this except for citizens from from uh, miami county and i don't know if the city manager has or not but if he wants to speak to that he can and if he don't then i don't know i can't answer i am talking to you guys you don't have no i don't talk to him and my my math's a little blurry so I see again in this valley area here, there's, I think it's called the existing pond, which is there, and it's a spring pond that goes directly into Silver Lake. Then there's a pond over here, if I read it correctly, I think it says WG on it, which might be water quality. Does that mean it's a retention pond? I'm not sure. Okay, well then I'm just suggesting that as you can, whatever the communication is down the road, if that's a retention pond and the, the water comes off the developed area, eventually it's going to Silver Lake. And then who's responsible for that pond and liable for the, the maintenance of that pond, if it turns out to be that way. Just, just something you can ask down the road so everybody's on the same page. Uh, last week I sort of went down the line of how long they knew about this communication you say didn't communicate and I understand that and there wasn't any negotiations communication but you are aware of it somewhere along the line were you aware of this uh, developer coming in two weeks ago six weeks ago eight weeks ago ten weeks ago I think we stated in previous meetings sir that we found out the same time that everybody from Miami County showed up in our meeting and jumped all over us for knowing something that we didn't know, no. And I believe I told everybody at that meeting that we found out the same time you guys showed up. Okay, and this council has not had any contact with any developer, any contractor, or anybody else in Miami County. And that's so the answer. So I don't know how much plainer I can say that. That answers my question. I just want to know if you, where, when you were, became aware. But I've, we've answered that question on multiple occasions. Now. Well, sometimes I hear things. My hearing is not very good, to be quite honest with you. Maybe it was stated and I didn't hear it. Okay. So I'm just, you answered the question. That was a perfectly legitimate answer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have voiced my opposition to this project to the city council, and I will continue to voice my opposition to this council, the developer, any financial institution involved, 
the builder involved, the salesperson involved, any potential home buyer. Also, I will continue to look to any legal or political avenues that will lead to stopping this development. Protect the property. And one other thing that was interesting, you know, because I was trying to figure out how long in the proposal and asked if the community was surveyed or polled or maybe a phone questionnaire asked the community's position. Has that ever happened? No. No. Okay, that's well, a good no, answer. Yes, actually, yes. Oh. We have two meetings a month. No, I'm talking about you going outside this room. No. And it, okay, knows the answer. And just a little while ago, we were talking, your, your group was talking about the uh, trash pickup and what, what proposed that you were going to do about the trash pickup. And it was even commented. I heard the comment that said, maybe we should talk to citizens, see how they will react to an increase in, I don't know if it was weekly or biweekly rates, how they would react to it. And you're willing for a $6 thing to talk to your citizens. And when you're talking about something this massive with roads and schools and everything else, you're, you're not talking to them. Or you're not asking if they're interested or asking them if that's a good idea or a bad idea or what can we do. Maybe we should continue the development up the street on 235 North and see how the community adjusts, adapts to that project. Anyway. Sorry. Clayton Sears is the gentleman that you want. I'm to sorry, talk. I can't hear you. Clayton Sears, he's the development manager. Mr. Sears, Mr. The male. All right, Clayton Sears. I have a card. Perfect. Thanks for your help. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else? Hello, Mary Ann Layton, 8085 East New Carlisle Road. There was mention about the 34, 35 acres that won't be developed, but it would be a park for New Carlisle. Is that correct? Uh, that's, I mean, I think that's an important, you know, the first mock up of it. So potentially, possibly, yes. Okay. Has anybody ever been down on that 35 acres? No, it's private land. <laughs> I can give you a private tour. I've been renting it for 10 years. Um, the most like no recent, seen so well, I'm just saying he heads up. You need to, before you go into anything like that, with that particular piece of property, I'll take you all down there and let you see it. And I know it's just a concept, but they, on the last map, they had where the main paint trail would be. It's right through swamp. Yeah. Part of it behind the existing pond a number of years ago, I had a fence, guys fence it off because I didn't want cattle back there. They weren't be coming out. And then on the northwest corner, um, Jimmy Scott used to go down there and mow it, think he could mow it. And then his brother, it was a big bat wing mower big tractor, his brother would have to come with a bigger tractor to pull them out. And there's only a certain time of year that the cattle need to go down there. And you better have some high boots. So that's where they're going to have this trail for the people. And then is anybody familiar with, what do they call it, Dead Man's Run? or what Dead it? Man's Hill. Yeah, is anybody familiar with it? Okay. Yep. Yep. A lot of people. It's an awesome place. But it's something. <laughs> but I've never been back here. I didn't illegally climb a fence and go sledding. <laughs> I never yes. went back there. I, I would never try that. But anyway, um, and then to, I went out last year because Jimmy could no longer mow. And I've got a five foot mower. I did maybe a quarter of the mow, of pasture mowing, and it took 10 hours. So if, if, because it'll grow, not grass, but wheat this tall. So if you're going to maintain it, you need to go down and look at it and see what it's going to cost you to maintain it as a park. 
And then also, you, earlier, you said this was in your plan use, plan use, or we call it plan use plan, land use plan. Well, Bethel Township has it in theirs also. So, but it's in yours. But it's on our side of the road. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Your land use plan in one of the first meetings. Plan. You're talking about the, the uh, development plan. No, like, it's our comp yeah, it's, it's our comprehensive land use plan that says that we go after our. Budget. Yeah, it doesn't mean specifically. It doesn't. It doesn't lay, lay out a specific. I'm plot. sorry. It doesn't lay out a specific plot of land in that. From what I understood from the first meeting, Randy it did. We why, why we would not. We only handle uh -huh. land that is in our name. So that parcel that is in Miami County that's up for annexation now would not be covered in our current comp land. But it's you not told us that the very first meeting, that mm, that land was, well, no. I guess we yeah. could look at that. Yeah, you but, you know, and then talking about the traffic. Mm -hmm. The land on Palmer and 40 is, what, minimum of five-acre lots? They're all sold now. Mm. For big bucks. <coughs> so these little itty bitty lots, let's see, people don't hang around. And then the way they have it, you could have one lot and have three neighbors behind you. Anyway, just a thought. So if you want to take a tour, 35 acres, incredible hills and dales and everything else. I'll take you for a private tour in the gate. All right. Thank Hope you. Someone takes me up on. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Since I wasn't regulating, just one quick thing. I invited you all out. No one, no one took me up on that one. And answer me this. If it gets annexed and then it goes to a zoning commission, can it be just zoned agricultural? I don't, I don't know zone. That's it will for a couple of weeks until we change it to our part. Can who votes on the zone? That would be planning board. Can the planning board ask it to be art agricultural only? Why would they do that? Because they think it's the right thing. Uh, it's just a question. There's, no point, they, there's no point in going through the annexation at that point in time, sir. Well, that's what I'm trying to ask. If, if there's a, that would be an option. If I don't know how it goes, planning board, zoning board board here, hire here. I'm just wondering if it can be left agriculture. So that's my question. So I'll be back next week and see if you got an answer for that one. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, may I say something? You may, sir, Mr. Vice Mayor. When I started the Nucleau News in the fall of 2009, the very first meeting I attended was not an official government meeting, it was a group of Bethel Township citizens trying to figure out how they could stop Huber Heights from gobbling up their township. Here it is 13 years later, and you're doing the same thing. When Montgomery, let me tell you a little story. When Montgomery County was formed, there were a number of townships. One of those was Randolph Township. There is no more Randolph Township because so much of it was annexed by Dayton by Trotwood and by Englewood that it was not a viable township. The trustees asked the village of Clayton if they would annex the rest of the township, and they did. I'm not positive, but I'm sure the same thing happened to Mad River Township in Montgomery County. So much of it was gobbled up by Dayton that it was not a viable township. They asked the village of Riverside to annex the rest of the township. I can see this happening to Bethel Township. Like you said, Tip City, New Carlisle, Vandalia, and um, uh, Huber Heights. All of them border against Bethel Township. All of them can come in and if somebody wants to annex their property into, this, into one of those cities, they can do that. We are the last step in this process. I've said this before, and apparently I'll have to say it again. Miami County can have a say in it. Uh, our planning board can have a say in it. 
we can have a say in it. But there's only so much we can do according to state law. And we cannot violate state law. If we do, we would have to suffer some serious consequences. And we don't like that. Like Mike said, our, our, I don't remember who it was that said it, but our job is to look after the interests of the citizens of the city of New Carlisle, to look at, out for its benefit and its, its growth. And um, all I hear is the same people come up saying the same thing every week. And if it continues, you're probably just going to build up animosity. So I would suggest talking to Miami County first, getting together with the township, the, group, the groups in the township, see what you can do legally to stop annexation. I'm sure there are things you can do. We have no say in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'll just second, please. Okay. Council, anything else? <coughs> I was just going to say something as well. Um, you know, I, I spoke at the last meeting. You know, we, we as council haven't learned anything new about any of this since the very first meeting of this. Um, and I've spoken with a couple of you also after the meeting. And yes, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm very attracted to this idea. I mean, but once we get, uh, you know, once the administration side of the house does their job and, and, and gets the information needed to, to bring it to us at that point, you know, the traffic studies. Traffic studies are being done right now. I think there's cameras up on, on some of the streets you know, doing whatever it is that they do, measuring and calculating and things of that nature. Um, you just said it, you said it, and, and again, we have, to, we have to look out for what's in the best interest of our city, our, you know, our, our citizens, you know, people best have, have we done polls to, to see if citizens are for this. And I tried to touch on this in the last meeting, I didn't quite get it out the way I wanted to. Citizens who are in agreement with something, say, we're doing, you know, whether it's paving roads or whatever it may be. If they're, if they're happy with something they're doing, even though we would love them to show up and give us a pat on the back or Mr. Bridge a pat on the back, they don't show up and do that. The majority of the people who have been coming here are the people who are, are not for it, and most of them are outside the city limits. So I take that as the pattern I've seen since the 10 years I've been here on council. If the majority of these people aren't showing up and, and patting us on the back, then they're for it or else they would be here because when we're doing something wrong just like you guys are they are furious and they will show up and tell us that they don't want it and we haven't seen that yet except for maybe a few of them and, and then the people who live in miami county um you know i i've, I've never lived outside of new Plaza, so i can't say i understand where you guys are coming from other than you know i i have family that lives out in the country in pennsylvania um and, and i enjoy the scenery out there where my grandparents live and things of that nature I did learn something today, though, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong. Learning from, from some of you who've been coming to the meeting that Bethel Township has you've got the trailers, and I've seen them when I go by the school. I thought that was a recent thing. Someone told me, right, see, and this has apparently been going on for, how long ago is that? 20 years ago. Okay, so I mean, it's we're talking a long time, so I, <laughs> This, this sounds horrible, but I thought this was something that just recently developed. I mean, isn't and my feedback to that would be, if this has been going on so long, why can't they get this situation fixed? <laughs> and don't, I'm just, I'm just asking. But, hang on, let me, let me, let me finish. I don't want to get into it. So, um, I, I would like to come see it. But give me a ride. I'd love, yeah, let's do it. Um, But yeah, I, I, I don't have any, do what? July, yeah. July. I, I mean, I don't have anything to judge. You know, once we get the, once we get the traffic reports, I'm, I'm very interested in traffic reports, the, the uh, ergonomic, the, uh, the study on the land, and, the, and you're talking about the swampy areas. They've got that report. We will get that report. And then, you know, again, the people that say that this won't bring jobs to New Palau, which is insane because I've already talked to somebody who's already interested. I'm not going to disclose who because I wanted to keep it private. I wanted to build a new location uh, that I know citizens would be thrilled with. And it will start a dom domino effect. Um, it's, you know, we have to look at our citizens. And if they're not here screaming about it, then I think that this is probably something they want. Um, if I may add something. 
Sir? And then we'll go to you, Mr. Hunter. If we have more people, there'll be more businesses, greater chance more businesses will be located in town. You guys say you shop in New Carlisle, you'll benefit that way too. I'm done. Okay. Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, I am a transplant to New Carlisle. I've only been in New Carlisle 13 years. My previous, my previous five residences was in Bethel Township, a little village called Brant. I think you all know where that's at. Uh, I love living in, in the township. It gives you lots of freedoms to do pretty much whatever you want. They have a few restrictions, but not many. Uh, the trustees that was in charge back then was very attentive to the community's needs. If you needed something done, they would get onto it. The thing about a city is, and and I, I, I can I understand what you guys are saying about the township changing. But eventually the township will cease to be to, to exist because of the other communities around. And Huber Heights has taken probably a fourth of the township. It may not be quite that much, but they're not done yet. They're up to 40. There's a farm out there for sale right now. They're going to take it. Some developers got to buy it. They're going to put more houses on 40. I haven't really noticed a lot of traffic on 40 because of that development. But then again, I don't go through there at five, six o'clock at night when all the traffic's on the, on the road. Our main responsibility to this council is we need to grow our city so our city don't become extinct like a lot of townships has. Uh, the vice mayor mentioned Mad River. Uh, Randolph Township, Randolph. I think, is also gone. Uh, What's the one uh, over by Inglewood? That's Randolph. That Randolph threw up there. You know, so the townships are, are going to be a thing of the past, and it'll probably take another 50 years, maybe 100 years before all that happens. But we have a duty to our city to grow this city, because if the city don't grow, and this city hasn't had any growth in, if I remember correctly, 55 years or so, something like that. It'll, it'll grow us with wind creeks, but just very, very Okay, we haven't had any growth in 52 years. Uh, <laughs> you know, we... What are we doing here? Our population has decreased. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> our population is only, I think, 5,100 now, or 5,000? Well, it's like 5,000. 5,000? 5, 5, yeah, it's like, no, it's more, it's like 5,000. If, 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 if we keep losing people, my point is, the city will cease to be a city and become a township. A village. 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 Well, yeah, we'll go to a village and then to the township if people keeps moving out of here. So our, and I know the, the lady here said, you know, she's fine with the city going, you know, down the tubes, becoming a, a village and a township. The city and the people that live in the city is not fine with that. This council is not fine with that. And this administration is not fine with that. Uh, I'm not saying whether I'm for or against going across county lines and taking, in my opinion, taking other counties' land. Uh, the city manager and I had a conversation with that in January, actually, I think it was in January, and he's not sure where I'm at on this because I told him exactly what I thought about it, and I will keep that between him and I. Uh, but when it comes to us, I can't sit here and tell you right now how I will vote on that. Because I think for a city to go after somebody else's land is wrong in another county. However, we are not going after your land. Your land wants to come to us. So we have an owner, which is the, con or the uh, developer, who owns all this land, apparently. I'm just telling you what, we, what I think to be true. If he owns this land, then he is the single person to come and ask us to annex it. Sure, I don't, you know, I mean. As of yesterday, Jimmy Scott, the owner, owner of the land, has not received a check. Has he got a contract? Did he sign a contract? Then he has a contract. It don't matter if he receives that check out of Jersey or not. That contractor or developer owns that land per that contract. It don't matter if he made well, for it or not yet. It, 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 it's, yeah, it's all depending on the annexation, you know. So, ma'am, I'm not going to have a conversation with you about who owns the land, who don't. 
If there's a contract, in my mind, if I sign a contract on a house, I own that house until closing, or uh, potentially own it up until closing. If closing falls apart and they have fell apart at closing, I've walked away. And then they threatened to sue me. I said, well, sue me, do what you gotta do. But I'm not, I've decided I'm not buying it now. So if, if this happens, and it does finally get to us, which I said before, I'll say it again, it could be the end of this year before anything gets to us. It'll be at least another two years they start building. In my mind. Anything else? That's it, sir. That's anything else. We have uh, Ms. Eggleston. No. I'll let them finish. So, Ann, I'd like to take you up on your offer. I'm sorry? I'd like to take you up on the offer. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I lived in Bethel Township for 10 years. My grandkids go to Bethel schools. And I understand your guys' concern. I do. I mean, I loved it in Bethel Township, and, but I was born and raised in New Carlisle. I have been here for 65 years, and I love it here. Um, I don't want to see New Carlisle die. And as I said, our population has decreased steadily since 1980. Okay. But with all these opportunities, Because they asked us to. Because they asked us to. <laughs> and I mean, but the development on Scarf and the Colorado, they have not presented anything to us. And we've got even less with the potential developments north of town. So until, until, well, and I understand, like I said, I love Bethel Township. My grandkids go to Bethel. And, and I can, My boy's family, their dad's family, has been in Bethel Township for many, many years. And they're well known over there. And, I mean, we got divorced, but I'm still part of that family. So I understand that. They really do. And, you know, but like everyone else has said, nothing has been presented to us yet. Right. You got anything else to say, Mr. No. Right. Mr. Cook? Are we done with this issue? Uh, I have several other things to bring up. Sure. Talk about anything you want. What, uh, Mr. Bridge is occupied. Did we set a date for the pizza and council night? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we do that? Absolutely. That's the department, I thought. Are we doing pizza and what are we doing? Yeah. Council and donuts, pizza, pizza and political. Well, whatever. Not in the city. We ain't not in a city-owned <laughs> building. We can't. We'll have it at my house. We'll have it at Mr. Cook's house. We have all the beer we want. You buy the beer and come to my house. <laughs> but I, I think we need to get sure. that done enough for yep. late. Mm -hmm. So you guys want to have it here at the shelter house with parking? Or you want to be back downtown? What do you think? I think here is better. More open, more room. So what are you thinking, when are we thinking? This month? Next month? I would say next month with the weather. In May? Okay. What do you guys think of May? Hold on, let me get the shelter house calendar up. Because there's going to be zero weekends in May, more than likely. All right, yeah, you got mm -mm. downtown. Mm -mm. 
I got nothing. I don't have my. There's not a weekend available. I'm in July, and it's their books. So, in other words, we rent a tent and have it out front. We can have it under that open air shelter out there, no problem. On the other side, or we can yeah. we have a firehouse. To firehouse. Fire, look at the. Mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. Citizens right. come in, look at the firehouse. Have restroom facilities. Yeah. Else right because they bring the kids. They can go look at the equipment, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's best for you? What do you got going on? Statewide? Yeah. Um, May. May. Doesn't matter. Any, any Saturdays? Other than the emergency drugs, we're good. <laughs> it's always been the first Saturday. That's the bell goes off. And then you get the drugs. Oh, I'm not driving that thing. Seven. I can't do my seven. That's opening day. Um, do this, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll get a low turnout the first Saturday because of opening day at the ball fields. 14th or 21st? Yeah, do the second. Second weekend? Yeah, second weekend. Second weekend. 14th? Yeah, 14th. Then May 14th. What time do we do it? Since we're going in a different. Well, it's pizza, so you can't have it in the morning. I don't know. We need to rethink the food. You can't keep that stuff warm that long. Pizza? You have to do sub Subway or something. Hey, you got you got, you got heating light? You got heating lights at full? Do it one more? What's wrong? Well, I do too. Domino's has warming bags. Domino's has warming bags. Okay. They do it for the football. For That's the easy. Ball. We can keep it warm. Okay. Yeah, if, if anything, I can run down and get a, two extra pizzas on the fly. It's not like it's on the fly. That's a restaurant term. <laughs> on the 14th. I was four, uh, 14th. Brown. Okay, so oh, maybe the 14th is not the day. You're going to prom, prom again? Are we doing well, 14th, oh. you got to think about it's prom. You don't want to do it on the prom day, do you? Because no. you, you know, let's, what about the 21st? Okay. Okay, so how about, let's just go in June 4th, which is Saturday? June 4th. When does, hold on, when does Farmer's Market open? And then maybe you take it back downtown and do the opening of Farmer's Market. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry. Well, this is I a great idea. I that a lot. Is just opening June, market? June 18th. 101 downtown? There you go. Maybe with market? Maybe we'll put a little booth up out front or something. Whatever. Okay, so what are we calling this? Pizza and? No, if it's June 18th, it'd be farmer's market. It'd be the morning, would it? Yeah, yeah. the morning. Hold on, I will have that in the room. Yeah, yeah. And I do believe they're having the night market early. I didn't say what pints, I just said pints. There's, What's his there's, email, there's Roy? There's some competition there's right now. Huh? Yeah, the farmer's market held East Saturday, starting on Saturday the 18th. Oh, hold on. I have a night market in July and Halloween, and then another one in. What are we doing? Okay, so just do it on that weekend, and just do it. June 18th is a health fair market day at the market, so I don't know if you guys want to have pizza at the health fair market. Same for the <laughs> farmers market. We can just do it over at the well, we'll do, do it the 18th in the evening or afternoon over at the fire station. Fire station. At the fire station. One of them's a little tight and hard. That's a good one. True. I'll just be there with a bunch of pizzas. Just schedule it. Let's know when it is. Time. Give me time. June 18th. We got that. Pearl 1. June 18th. Oh, we got 9 to 11. Pizza at 9 yeah. in the morning? Oh, pizza? No. 11 to 12 1. 12 to 2. 11 to 1. 11 to 1. What time does Domino's open? 11. 11. 11. Do 12 to 2. <laughs> All right, I hate you guys. <laughs> do 12 to 2. What about 12 to 2? Yeah, do noon. 12 to 2. Yeah, 12 to 2. Yeah, I don't care. 12 to 2. Well, we keep up putting it off. We'll be back to coffee and donuts. That's the ideal book. You good with that, too? <laughs> 12 to 2. So, 18, 6, that's fire station, 12 to 2. There you go. Fire station or 101? <laughs> fire it's station. Fire. Lynn's Farmers Market started this morning. June 18th, fire station, noon at 2 p.m. We're getting dominoes. Yep, sounds good. Okay, moving on. Bill, anything else? Oh, we put that in a legal ad. Yep. Just get it done. What did we decide here? The 18th of June. June 18th. 12th of June. June, June. Firehouse. 
I'll send a calendar about. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll calendar invite you guys. All right. Second factor, since we do have a full council, what's the chance of getting together for that council retreat and the comprehensive plan that we talked about for 16 months? 18 months. It was 18. No one's okay, counting. 18 no. months. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know how long it's been. Um, question. Well, go ahead. what's the council retreat intended for? Primarily, it's for, I guess the word is formulating a plan of where we're going in years to come. Every council does this, except in the Corral. We're a little bit behind the time. It can't be done at a regular meeting? I'm sorry. It can't be done at a regular meeting. Mm, it's a little different. Pardon me. It's a little different. It's like a really extensive mm, work session. One-on-one -on -one session. Fairborn just got done with isn't theirs. It, isn't it open Spring to the public since mm -hmm. all seven of us be there? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Yeah. City of Springfield took two weekends and did about a four-hour session on Saturday for two days. Yeah, we don't. Okay. Weekends. You got to got to protect those. They had a facilitator and. And it all worked out. Fair, I'm, good. I'm good on Wednesday night. Fairborn just went down. They just got done with it. They had an article in the paper. They um, rented out a hotel in northern Kentucky, and all elected officials went. Um, and then certain days, key administration came down, and they have basically it's a gigantic work session. Yes, they are open to the public. We publicize it in the paper. They're more than welcome to drive where you guys at. Um, topics are up to you, you know, um, whatever you guys want to focus on. Do you want me to look at maybe get some Can examples? Can we come up with a mm -hmm. plan for the next meeting and figure it out from there? Can I not be pigeonholed to the next meeting because I got a lot on the plate? So within the next month or so, before, right. the, before the first one in May, what I'll do is I'll call around other people, get get you guys a little self sheet about how they did it in the cities. That way you guys can look at other examples. You do have a budget line item for this. If you wanted to go out a little bit, you can do that. Whatever you want to do it. A layer on is a very popular place right over here. I think it's in right over by you guys somewhere. A layer on or whatever it's called. A layer on. Yeah. on. Yeah. Layer on. Mm -hmm. Wild cat river. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Third and final thing, and then I'll shut up. I had a communique from the uh, Parks and Rec that they're having a considerable problem in trying to get food trucks for the 4th of July. They are requesting that the possibility of setting a date for the 4th of July event in 23, could we set up a tentative date in order to possibly give them the opportunity to set up these food trucks these food trucks are operating probably a year in advance. That's on you guys. Yeah, we can do whatever. Are, are, we want, are they wanting to do that like on July 4th weekend? Or what are we doing? Yeah, the weekend, or? preferably the weekend before the July 4th that gives us a little when bit we of do freedom. Our right. <coughs> Wait, I'm confused. Is this food trucks for the fireworks event or a separate event they're having? I'm sorry. Is this food trucks for the firework event that they're having trouble getting? Mm -hmm. No, this has to do, this has to do with the with them getting reservations for the food trucks in for the fireworks. In for the fireworks, the food trucks. Okay, gotcha. This year they're sure. having problems because everybody's booked up and gone. Mm -hmm. So they requested the possibility of can we set a tentative date so that they've got something to look at and to tell these food trucks, hey, here's what we've got, can you be there? So what I can do for that is if council's okay with it, give me the next meeting to do that because I'd like yeah, to call the fireworks fine. company to see if we can secure a date that far in advance because there's no sense of us saying, yeah, we can lock it in, here's the date you're doing, and then we negotiate the contract and we don't have that date available for fireworks. Okay. Um, okay. So 2023, yeah. probably around the same, Time frame we do it now. 23, June 23, 624. I know we don't have a budget established, so it's yeah, we, we'll kind of that. redundant, but if we can do that in order to help them out, and I'm surprised Brandy isn't here. 
Well, sure. We've been before July 4th. July 4th. Then, oh, in 2023? Yeah. Say, so saying it's July 1. Mm -hmm. Saturday before the 4th of 23 is July 1. Because I didn't have a big fancy face like you guys. We want to do the week before the event anyway. Because we'll get our bank. Bring it up. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get, we get a, we get a discount. Let's do it 27. <laughs> be June 27. What's that? Is that a Saturday or something? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. what, are we all looking at the calendar? June 24, 2023. So it's the 24th Saturday? Yes. So the 25th would be the rain out date? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I'll get a hold of them. I'll email you all, but bring it back next council so we can all have it. All right. So we got one, two, three, four things out of this. I like meetings better when I don't have work to do after them. All right, council, anything else? Nope. All right, moving on to resolutions. Resolution 2022-08R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the city of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training required by the Ohio Public Records Act. Council. Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor is the first, and Ms. Eggleston is the second. Mr. Um, Eggleston. Eggleston. Yes. All right, explanation of this ordinance. This is a housekeeping ordinance. This is something we do every year. Uh, State of Ohio requires sunshine laws training, but they also allow us to pass legislation that I can go on their behalf. Um, I have reached out to all of them. Um, I, we haven't heard back from most of them. For those of you who said you wanted to go to Miami, that's fine. We can still go. Consider this a catch all. Something comes up, you can't go, you're covered. Okay, so any other council members want to go, let me know. I got three of us set up already. Um, this is, does not have to be publicized. If all seven want to go, we can go. It is actually legal in the state of Ohio to do that without publicizing. So let me know. Um, but in the meantime, this should cover it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roybald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggles. Yes. That passes 7 0. There are no ordinances, um, other business. There's nothing specific listed on our agenda either. Um, when you <laughs> just a second, I was working. I heard it. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. I, I was I would, just. Actually, I would draw my motion. I was actually just making a joke. I just. I just want one time for the clerk when she calls for the vote and she gets to Mr. Bond, just saying Bond, then Bond. <laughs> okay. I'll do that. You've been, you've been sitting on that for well, six months. Well, you can mess up and say James Bond. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Sorry. Motion to First, adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Robal, second by Mr. Lindsay. Second Do I have it on my phone? Second by Lindsay. Oh, was All it? right. Councilman Robal. Yes. I put a big flyer. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Bob. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman April. Eggleston? Yes. Oh, yes. Next week. That's a 7 0. Thank you. Well,